Hey everyone, this is Micah Jones, and I'm going to show you in Photoshop how I retouch my images. Now, when I bring my photos into Photoshop, the first thing I do is retouch them. Um, from Camera Raw to Photoshop, I don't do any sharpening or any noise reduction. In my experience, doing the retouching before you do any kind of noise reduction and sharpening usually results in a better pro uh, finished product. It just the results tend to be smoother. The technique that I use is called frequency separation, and it's very popular amongst the high-end retouching industry. And the the benefit to it is the fact that you can separate the colors and shades and tone from the detail and keep them separate from each other so they don't contaminate each other and it gives you a lot of control on what you can do when it comes to retouching specific parts of the image so let me show you how this is done first thing we need to do is we need to duplicate the layer twice so control J and we'll duplicate it again and we're going to rename the bottom layer low pass and we're going to name the top layer high pass okay now the first step is to blur the low pass layer so we're going to disable the high pass layer select the low pass layer and we are going to go to filter blur gaussian blur and now what needs to be done here is you need to blur it enough that um, there's no noticeable edge detail left in the picture it should just be shades so we are going to increase this let's see Oh, way too much. No. Okay, so 50 pixels is good for this one. Um, depending on your picture, um, this will change. So if your subject is closer in the composition, you will have to blur it more. If they are further away, you have to blur it less. It just depends on each picture how much blur you'll do. So press OK. OK, now we're going to go to the high pass layer, make it visible again. And we are going to go to Image, Apply Image. And the settings here will, as long as you're on a 16-bit image, it'll always be the same. So we need to select the low pass layer in the source. We need to invert it. And then the blending, we need to select add. And it'll look like an overdone high pass, which is what we need for this. Okay, and then we're gonna go over to the blending modes and change the high pass layer to linear light. And now the picture looks normal again. And if your picture looks normal again, then you've done it right. Um, so now what we can do is we can use the low pass layer to even out skin tones if we want to change or even out any of the tones in their skin to even the clothes and the jacket and stuff like that. The high pass layer contains all the detailed information. So if I turn off the low pass layer, you're going to notice that it's really, really intensely um, detailed now, which is not that great looking. So at this point, we've successfully separated our picture into two different frequencies, the low pass layer and the high pass layer. All the color and tone information on this layer and all the sharp detail on this layer. So from here, then what you can do is using either your spot healing brush or healing brush and I use the spot healing brush 99.9% .9 of the time because it's a quicker form of it and it usually does a good enough job and proximity match normal 
and you do, do not, if this is checked, you want to uncheck it, because you only want to sample the layer you're working on. And let's zoom in a little bit. Now, something you'll notice is my brush is angled and the roundness has been reduced. So it's kind of like a little angled oval. When retouching, um, to me, no matter how you do it, you need to angle the brush and thin it out because it will do a better job. Usually when you are retouching with a round brush, it tends to usually cause artifacting or blurring and it just doesn't look as good. So this I've noticed to work the best. Okay, so basically all you have to do is just start retouching. Just take your brush and go over the areas that you want to remove. And, and this is a very time consuming this is a very time consuming process. Um, you, you need to be prepared to spend quite a bit of time working on your picture. Um, this effect, this technique, will really only work as good as the time you put into it. Because if you do not put a fair amount of time into it and take your time and be particular about the way you remove stuff, then it's really not going to help you out very much. As you can see, I tend to work in little pieces, little by little, removing blemishes and anything that I don't want in the picture. And you can also use this to remove hair most of the time, as a little, like little strands that are sitting here. And it'll usually do a pretty good job. Now, an area like that, that's going to require the clone stamp tool, but that can be in a, a later video. But yeah, just going through here, removing little pieces bit by bit. And even like little lines like this. It disappears pretty easily. And some people don't remove these, some do. It depends on what you want. You can see there, it picked up some weird stuff, so you kind of got to go over it little by little again. It really is a, a very um, particular process. And even on the groom, we can come over here and retouch on him a little bit. Removing little spots. And really, the smaller the brush and the more time you spend on this, the better it will turn out in the end. There's definitely a difference between spending 30 minutes or 3 hours on a picture. And it's really it's up to you what you want it to look like in the end. If you want it to be perfect and look like that stuff that you see all the fashion photographers doing, then you'll have to spend many, many hours. If you want to just have a natural kind of light retouch, then you know just spend a couple minutes on it. Now me, right now in this video, I'm probably only going to spend a couple minutes on it, but probably after the video is done, I'll finish it and I'll spend about an hour working on it. I tend to try to make it perfect, but still realistic. Alright, so let's back up and see what that looks like so far. Actually, there's one more little spot I'll get rid of. And sometimes you'll have to zoom out just to see kind of what you've been doing. I tend to pixel peep a little bit. <laughs> Alright, so if we go back to the original, before, 
and the after, before, and the after. And after just a couple little minutes, we've already made her skin look a little bit better. Remove some of the wrinkles and blemishes, and you know, another hour of this, and it'll be perfect. At least to me. Um, now, to quickly demonstrate what the low pass layer can do, um, just select the low pass layer and select your brush tool. And you're going to want to put the flow down to 1%, and that's how I do it. But, you know, depending on how you work, this could change. Um, so basically, let's say I wanted to change, just for demonstration purposes, his ear color. I'll sample the color over here, and I will start painting on his ear. And, th and this is also another slow process. You don't want to rush this. You definitely want to take your time and go over it very slowly, very lightly, and be very careful not to change the tone too quickly. And as you can see, I took his ear from the slightly red tone that it was and made it a lot more natural. Now, I think I probably went over a little too much, but for demonstration purposes, it kind of gives you an idea. Also in the description below, I'm gonna include a link that will allow you to download a pack of actions for Photoshop for creating the frequency separation layers. And it'll be, I believe about four of them, ranging in different blur radiuses. Um, not custom, so if you have a particular image that it does not work for, you will have to do it manually, but these four can definitely help the process a little quicker. And that is how I use the technique frequency separation to retouch my images in Photoshop. Hope you all like this tutorial. I hope this technique can help you guys out with your own images. If you have any suggestions for tutorials you'd like to see in the future, please leave a comment below. Um, please subscribe to the channel to keep up with any of the other videos that I put out, as well as future tutorials. And uh, I will see you guys later. Thanks. Bye.